السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد Today inshallah ta'ala I will share with you uh, some things that we can help appreciate the phrase that we say so often that is the opening of the mother of the Quran alhamdulillah rabbil alamin and particularly the phrase alhamdulillah the essence of the entire Quran is the Fatiha you can think of it as the entire Quran is being explained or is an explanation of what Allah says in the Fatiha and the Fatiha its essence is the first opening the opening of the Fatiha alhamdulillah it's actually the essence of the entire Qur'an. And this phrase is something we say all the time. But like all those other adhkar that we make all the time, we're often not very aware or very conscious of, of the power and the depth of its meaning. So I want to inshallah dedicate these few minutes that we have together to just remind ourselves of some of the power and the benefits and the, and the gift that Allah has given us inside of this very simple and very beautiful phrase, Alhamdulillah. The first thing I want to translate help you translate this, this phrase with is, you know, often they translate this as praise belongs to Allah. Or, you know, all praise is due to Allah. The Arabic word for praise is something else. It's either al-thana or al-madh. Al-thana or al-madh, praise. And some translations say thanks is due to Allah. And the Arabic word for thanks is shukr. It's something else. Hamd is a unique word of the Arabic language. It combines both praise and thanks. That's the first thing everybody needs to know. That hamd is not just praise, and hamd is not just thanks, it's both of those things together. And that's important. Because in life, sometimes you praise someone even though you don't thank them. Or you praise something even though you don't thank it. I, I, I looked at Table Mountain for the first time and I said, what a beautiful mountain. I look at I praised it, but I don't thank it. It's not normal, if you're, if you're leaving the masjid, you see a beautiful car outside, you go, ah, oh, that's a nice car. But you don't go pat the car on the windshield and say, thank you so much, BMW. You don't do that. You can praise something without thanking it. On the other side, you can thank someone without praising them. That's also possible. So maybe somebody did you a favor. And actually, I'll, I'll give you some extreme cases. Ibrahim salam's father used to build idols. What he does should never be praised. That's obvious. But he's still his father, and he raised him, and he provided for him, and he took care of him, and he sheltered him. And we all have to be grateful to our parents. Musa alayhi salam was raised in the palace of Fir'aun. And Fir'aun, nothing he does should be praised. But he still raised him, and he lived in his house, and even Musa alayhi salam acknowledges the favor, وَتِلْكَ نِعْمَةٌ تَمُنُّهَا عَلَيَّ That is a favor you did for me. In other words, sometimes you even have to thank those who are not worthy of what? Praise. So it's possible that you praise without thanks, and sometimes you thank without praise. The other interesting thing that makes hamd difficult, different from madh and thana. Madh actually in Arabic can be done when you're not genuine. You know, in, uh, you know if, if a police officer pulls you over because you were speeding, and he comes to the window, license, registration, insurance, and you say, nice hat officer, or looking sharp. You don't think he has a nice hat. But you're praising him, and your praise is not genuine. You understand? That praise is not genuine. And sometimes kids will praise their mom and dad because they're about to get in trouble. I love you so much, mom. You're the best mother ever. Let me see your report card. <laughs> the word hamd actually necessitates genuine praise and genuine thanks. It can't be artificial. By definition, it has to be real, sincere. So it combines both praise and thanks together. Now what does that mean simply speaking? We say Alhamdulillah for example when we eat a meal. We finish a meal, we thank Allah, we, say, we praise Allah and thank Allah Alhamdulillah. Or maybe, maybe the food you ate didn't taste that good. Maybe the chicken wasn't very well done. And you still say what? Alhamdulillah. And that has to be genuine. That has to be, you know what that means? Even if it didn't taste good, I know that Allah nourished my body with this food and I am still grateful for what I received. And I know despite my criticism of what I just received, what Allah has given me should still, I may not praise that chicken, I'm still gonna praise Allah. I may not praise the food, I'm still praising Allah Because everything I enjoy in this life, whether I, whether I understand it or not, 
whether I can taste its goodness or not, I know one thing, Allah must always be praised and must always be thanked. Praise and thanks have to go together. Sometimes people say things like Alhamdulillah and they mean the opposite. How are you doing brother? Ah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, what can you say Alhamdulillah? You know, <laughs> you're complaining by saying Alhamdulillah. That means your heart is in a different direction and the words are in a different direction. When we say Alhamdulillah, our heart and our, and our tongue have to line up. We have to line up and we have to acknowledge that we, it's, it's Allah's way of teaching us that we have to look at the positive in things. We absolutely must look at the positive in things. Now, let's think about praise for a moment. We praise things that are beautiful. We praise things that are pleasing. You know, people praise a beautiful child. What a cute baby. What a beautiful city. What a beautiful day. These are all kinds of what? Praise. Praise are things that are, when you find them, you're impressed by them. You're not critical of them, you're impressed. Because if you're, if you're not impressed with something, you criticize it. And when you're impressed with something, you praise it. Nowadays, we live in critical society, right? And the internet has made criticism very easy. So no matter what is out there that people are buying or people are saying, somebody posts a video on YouTube, somebody makes a comment, somebody writes an article, somebody writes a book, and when they write a book and they post a book online or they write an article, what do you find underneath? Comments. And the comments are mostly what? Critic I like the article, but there's one thing I want to criticize, criticize, criticize. We've been programmed to criticize. So much so in everything in life, you know, when, when students go to university, and they're going to take a class in the university. This happens in America. They, when they take a class in university, after the class, there's a survey. How did the professor do? Rateyourprofessor.com. You know? And you, the professor gets two stars, or three stars, or four stars, like his shoes you bought from Amazon. <laughs> you know? So everything is being criticized, and everything is being critiqued. And we have programmed our mind to find the flaw in something. Constantly finding the flaw in something. As a matter of fact, we're so programmed now, we even find the flaws in ourselves. You look in the mirror and say, oh, little bags, little too many bags under the eye. Or I'm getting a little fat, or this, or that, or the, oh, my skin, or this shirt doesn't look right, or you're constantly thinking about criticism. And you look at someone else, and that's what you're first thinking about. Criticism, criticism, criticism. We're be we've become so programmed to criticize that even when somebody shares something good with you, you come and say, MashaAllah, brother, really good advice, but let me tell you something. You can add this and this would be better. You can't just take the good, you have to give some kind of further criticism. It, it's, we've, been, we've been injected with this thought. And this is actually the opposite of the idea behind Alhamdulillah. First and foremost, we acknowledge that we have to find something and focus on something that will make us praise Allah. You have to train your mind to focus on things that are beautiful. Focus on things that are positive. Focus on things that you must appreciate. That's not easy to do. Because our minds are constantly attracted towards the negative. Our thoughts are attracted towards the negative. You have a few minutes to yourself, you're thinking about all your problems. Or you're thinking about why you hate this person. Or you're thinking about what they did wrong, or this one did wrong, or that one did wrong. Or what's, around, what's messed up around you. Or how come you don't have enough money? Or how come, what are the problems with your job? Every human being is surrounded by problems. That's how Allah created life. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Human beings were created drowned in exhausting labor, difficulty, stress, anxiety. That's how Allah created us. And yet, when we say Alhamdulillah, we fight all of that and we find something to be grateful for. We find something to be grateful for. I'll tell you something, before I came here, I met a fa I, I was in another country, I, sh I won't name for the privacy of the, of the family. I met a fellow who was uh, diagnosed with a disease and he, he didn't have many days. The doctors told him he doesn't have many days to live. And his family came, and came, came to me and met with me and said, I'd like to, for you to speak with him. And you know, he, he listens to you and things. And I said, okay, course, I'd love to go see him. So I went to go you know, just listen to him and talk to him and just say salam. And I'll tell you one thing. When I make a trip like that, I'm not doing anybody else a favor. They're doing me a favor. One dua from a person like that can change your life, right? That's the most valuable thing you can get, you know? So anyway, then I, I go and I'm speaking to him and he said something so beautiful to me. He said, you know, before I used to be busy at work, every day on the phone, even when you're leaving the work, you're still taking your messages, stressing out, and then there's problems at home, and there's this issue and this issue, and all the time either I'm thinking about things, money, job, car, house, things, or I'm thinking about people. 
problems with people or problems with things. Dunya. And now I'm in this hospital bed and I can't even get out and there's nothing to look at. I can't even see out of the window over here. And I have so much time to think about Allah. I have so much time to remember Allah. I am grateful for what Allah has given me. He finds this as an opportunity to remember Allah Azza wa Anybody else sees him and they pity him. I'm so sorry you're going through this. You're in so much pain. You can't even stand up right now. They have to clean you up. They have to feed you. You can't even feed yourself. I am so, you know, may Allah you know, give you ease and comfort. And he decides that he's going to see his reality through this. You put these glasses on. Those glasses are called Alhamdulillah. And your view changes. Your view completely changes. He's finding things to praise Allah for. He's finding a reason to be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. You know? And so this, this, is a, this is a mindset. And what does that mindset give you? Let me tell you, when you praise Allah Azza wa Jal, you, and, and you, know, you could say, but you know, how do you want me to praise Allah? I have so many problems. Well, how do you want me to be positive? How do you expect me to be positive? Quran tells us a unique story. The story of Yunus alayhi salam. Yunus alayhi salam got swallowed by a whale. That's not a normal jail cell. Inside of a whale, even if you escape, you're going to be in the ocean. You understand? And the food you're going to receive has already been chewed by an animal. You understand? That's not an easy place to be. And what does Allah say about him? And tasbih isn't just the perfection of Allah like I talked to you about before. Allah says, Sabih bihamdi rabbik. Declare Allah's perfection by being, being appreciative of Allah, by praising Allah, and also by thanking Allah. Allah is telling us, if he wasn't in that belly of that whale, thanking Allah and praising Allah and being positive, Allah says he would have stayed in that whale's belly ila yawmi yub'athun until the day of resurrection. Allah says he took him out of there because he was positive. Because he was finding reason to thank Allah. Now if he can find a reason to be positive with Allah Azza wa in that situation, I'm not sure you can tell me I'm drowning in problems. That man alayhi salam was literally drowning. And he found a reason, found ways to declare Allah's perfection and thank Allah and praise Allah. And so the first benefit of thanking and praising Allah is Allah will remove your problems. You want Allah to remove your problems? Stop complaining and actually start thanking Allah Azza wa Praising Allah Azza wa Finding reason to thank and praise Him. Alhamdulillah. The second thing I'll tell you, this is the most remarkable thing. I told you there's two pieces of hum. There's praise and there's also what? Thanks. Let's talk a little bit about thanks. The Arabic word for thanks is shukr. So shukr is included inside the words alhamdulillah. Gratitude towards Allah is included. And gratitude happens when somebody does you a favor. You, know, some, you had a flat tire on the road, you pulled over, some stranger stopped their car, and they helped you lift the car, they helped you change the tire, the least you should do is say what? Thank you. The least you can do is say thank you, because they did you a favor. In other words, thank you can never exist until you acknowledge that a favor has been done. That a favor has been done. Which means by saying Alhamdulillah, we are training our minds to actually scan and search, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? You see, our mind is usually thinking about what am I going to complain about today? Why am I miserable? Why am I, who's making me upset? Who do I want to destroy today? What did they say about me today? Who wrote what? Who said what? We're constantly thinking about what we should be ungrateful about. What should we be complaining about? And Allah Azza wa Jal, when He teaches us Alhamdulillah, He's forcing us to think about what am I supposed to be grateful for today? Let's start with where we begin our day. When we open up our eyes, when we open up our eyes, the masnoon dua, the dua of the Prophet ﷺ is, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana. Alhamdulillah is positive, yes or no? It's positive. Now let's say you had a terrible day yesterday, and a terrible day the day before, and a terrible day the day before, and you were depressed, and you were sad, and things didn't work out, and your job interview failed, and you failed the exam, and the fasting was too hard, and the iftar tasted terrible, all of, everything was going bad. Everything was going bad. And you wake up in the morning, and you make the dua, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana. What does it mean? You're thanking Allah, and you're praising Allah, for what? For giving you life after He gave you death, meaning Allah gave you a new life today that has nothing to do with yesterday. Completely new life. 
And you thank Allah, Ya Allah, thank you for a new start. I praise you, Ya Rab, you brought me to life once again. Because there was no way I deserved to be woken up from my sleep. Plenty of people died in their sleep. Just last night, plenty of people in the world died in their sleep. I could have been one of them, you could have been one of them. But Allah decided that you should get and I should get a new life. So we actually, every day, we thank Allah and we praise Allah for giving us a new life. A new life. You know, I've met some people that say some very strange things to me. I've met young people that say, why does Allah want us to thank Him? I mean, why does He need, why does he need that from us? Why does He keep asking us to thank Him all the time? And I say, so you're saying that that sounds, what, you know, self-obsessed or something? That what you're saying? Because, you know, in life, when somebody really wants thank you all the time, you know, if somebody gives you something and say, by the way, you're welcome. You say, what an arrogant person. This guy just wants me to thank him all the time? That's what you expect? You know? They, they, they think about this about people, and then they take these thoughts, and they have these thoughts about who? Allah. Is, why does Allah want me to thank him? Why does Allah want me to thank him? First and foremost, Allah wants nothing from you. And Allah needs nothing from you. Allah describes himself, Wallahu ghani yun hamid. Allah is free of need. And He has hamd, meaning praise and thanks, whether you exist or not. He doesn't need you to praise or to thank. Think about the words Alhamdulillah for a moment. You know, we don't say we praise Allah, we thank Allah. If the ayah was Nahmadullah, Ahmadullah, we praise Allah or I praise Allah or I thank Allah, then the focus is on me, I'm doing it. And it sounds like if I'm not doing it, it won't happen. If I don't do it, it won't happen. Allah didn't say that. He told us to say, Alhamdulillah, which means praise and gratitude belongs to Allah. Whether I exist or not, whether humanity exists or not, whether the skies and the earth exist or not, Hamd still exists for Allah. He doesn't need anybody for Hamd to exist. He even tells us in Surah Ar-Rahman, He says, you know, everything, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ Everyone on this earth is going to be dead. Everything will be dead. Death will be experienced by all. And by the way, if nobody is around to praise you, how can you say, I'm praised? You know, if nobody's ever praised you, and you say, by the way, I'm, glori I'm very glorified. Who glorified you, bro? You need someone to glorify you to, for you to be glorified. You need fans for you to say that I'm appreciated. If, no, if you live by yourself on a mountain and nobody ever knows you and say, I'm much appreciated, who appreciated you? You know? Well, Allah says, when all existence dies, all living beings die, everything experiences death. His glory, He still remains. He's still praised, He's still thanked. He doesn't need creation to thank Him. So actually, when He taught us, Alhamdulillah, that wasn't for Him. That was for who? That was for us. The first thing I told you is praise will get us out of trouble. But what does thanks do? What, is, what will thanks give you? A real thanks to Allah, what does it give you? Musa alayhi salam teaches us this in the Qur'an. Musa alayhi salam told the Israelites, and this will take me five minutes, I promise. I'll, I'll, I'll stick to my time. You know, a lot of times speakers say just two more minutes and it's 20 more minutes. I'll stick to five minutes, inshallah. So I know people have work and other things and other obligations. So, so bear with me. Musa alayhi salam helped the Banu Israel, the children of Israel, escape from the clutches of Fir'aun, who was slaughtering them and torturing them and treating them as slaves. And they come into the desert. They cross the water and they're in the desert. The desert is a nice environment or a harsh environment? Harsh environment. And they have men, women, children, old people, sick people, all of, no homes, no homes, and they're out in the desert. And everything they owned, their homes, their property, their clothes, everything is left behind. Not even time to pack a suitcase. They're all now in the desert, in the open desert. No water around, no nothing around. And they're starting to complain. What are we going to do? We're all going to die here. We don't have enough food in the desert. We can't even find one tree. How are we going to feed all these people? Thousands upon thousands of people. This is a bigger problem than Fir'aun. That would have been a quick death. This is a long, painful, drawn-out death. This is bad. And so Musa salam gathers all of them, and he gives them a khutbah. He gives them a sermon. And when he gave them the sermon, part of that sermon is the following. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Musa salam says to them, Allah has declared for you, 
Allah has decreed for you. And Allah has opened, un, opened up for you a gift. Ta'adhana could be described as idhan, meaning Allah has allowed for a, a gift to be showered on you. And these people are thinking pessimistically, what gift is this? You see a gift around here? And what's the gift Allah gave them? He says, إِلَّا إِن شَكَرْتُمْ If you could even be the least bit grateful, if you could be thankful, La in shakartum. If you were even in the least bit grateful, Allah's promise, La azidannakum. I I pro, I swear to you, I will absolutely, absolutely, absolutely give you more and more and more and more and more. The absolutely I said three times because in the Arabic it's three times. Allah is guaranteeing the one who can be grateful. Allah will give them more and more and more and more. The question is, more what? More what? Is He going to give us more food? More water? More protection? Allah didn't say what? Because if I say, I, I, I'll, I'll increase you. You say, increase me in what? Blood pressure? Increase me in what? Headache? You know? Sometimes when my students, some of them graduated, I said, Alhamdulillah, all of you have increased me. Some of you have increased me in gratitude. Some of you have increased me in patience. So, <laughs> you know? But Allah says, I will increase you. You know why He didn't specify increase you in what? Because each one of them needs something else to be increased. And Allah knows who needs what kind of increase. And He didn't limit the increase to one thing. So He will increase you in guidance. He will increase you in strength. He'll in increase you in inner peace. He'll increase you in rizq. He'll increase you in deen. He'll increase you in dunya. He'll increase you in children. He'll increase you in anything that you, what, that is best for you. And all you had to do is what? Just be grateful. Just be people of Alhamdulillah. Just that. And every, all these doors will open up. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And it's, it's conditional. It's a conditional statement. Allah is guaranteeing more and more and more and more for you so long as you can be grateful. So you can be thankful. That's it. You know, we're in the month of Ramadan. We're in the month of Ramadan. And the ayah of Ramadan that tells us about the spirit of Ramadan. You know how it ends? وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ All of this exercise, so you can declare how great Allah is, the way He guided you, and so you could become grateful. So you could become grateful. Ask yourself, as the days of Ramadan are going by, are you becoming more grateful? Or are you becoming more of a complainer? And nobody can answer that question for you except you. Because what's going on in your head and your heart, only Allah knows. On the tongue, you can just say, Alhamdulillah. That's easy. Allah will not be judging what's on our tongues. Allah will be judging what's inside our hearts. And this is the last, my five minutes are up. One more minute. Last but I leave you, Alhamdulillah is a statement of fact. But they say, the, the ulama say it's kalamul insha also. What that means is, Alhamdulillah is a emotional statement. You know when somebody says, hey, by the way, the flight arrived on time. I'm safe. I'm okay, mom. And the mother says what? Alhamdulillah. She's not just saying words of a fact, like praise belongs to Allah, in fact. She's actually declaring her feelings. She's declaring her feelings. Alhamdulillah is meant to be felt, not just said. Alhamdulillah is meant to be not just known, but to be experienced. It's, a spe it's the speech of the heart, not just the mind. That's what Alhamdulillah is. May Allah Azza wa make us a people that say Alhamdulillah with their hearts. And every time they stand before Allah Azza wa and recite the Fatiha, their sense of gratitude and thankfulness to Allah and appreciation of Allah and praise of Allah only increases. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa